2020, the first year of the pandemic. On balance, not a great year. The coronavirus. Into this chaos drops a stark warning about a different crisis that has been building for far longer. David Ambrose's documentary, A Life on Our Planet, showed a cataclysmic loss of biodiversity and left viewers wondering what they, as individuals, could do to help. In this series, Our Planet, Our Response, we aim to provide some answers. But first, let's talk a bit about biodiversity. Biodiversity, short for biological diversity, in its simplest terms, is every living thing on Earth. It's the animals, the plants, fungi, bacteria, all living organisms, plus the ways they interact with each other and their physical environment. But is it important? Should we care? Well, yes and yes. Biodiversity is more than just something we like as a great background for Instagram photos. It's critical to our very existence. In addition to regulating the climate, the quality of air and availability of fresh water, thank you, forests, oceans, wetlands and more, it's a source of food, materials, medicine and energy. And we humans are big fans of all those. And things aren't always so clear cut. Obviously, eating plants and animals is biodiversity that we consume directly, but around three quarters of global food crops rely on animal pollination simply to exist. And these are just the solid benefits of biodiversity. There are also the intangible but wholesome benefits, such as the sense of identity many cultures gain from nature, inspiration for the creative arts, and an increasing number of studies have shown benefits to our mental health. And obviously, it does make a good photo. So biodiversity is marvellous, and life would be marvellous too, were it not for the fact that biodiversity is disappearing. Studies across the globe, across multiple types of organisms, and across many years have found the same worrying trends again and again, a dramatic loss of biodiversity. An independent report in 2019 concluded that one million species of plants and animals are threatened with extinction. In 2020, the World Wide Fund for Nature looked at the Living Planet Index, a measure of relative change in biodiversity. This showed an average decline of 68% between the year 1970 and 2016. Looking closer, you find so many figures of declines that to list them all here would be nothing more than a sea of numbers. That's where a life on our planet came in. The 2020 Attenborough documentary cut through the numbers and highlighted five main drivers of biodiversity loss. Human-caused emissions have led to a rise in the average global temperature of one degree Celsius since pre-industrial levels. This is altering the climate to which species are adapted, causing extreme weather events, the melting of glaciers, and ocean acidification. The release of harmful products or chemicals into an environment can cause it to become uninhabitable, lead to poisoning, or affect a species' requirements for life. Humans have deliberately or accidentally transferred organisms into an area where they don't normally live. These invasive species can outcompete native wildlife, leading to local extinctions. On land, this is often the destruction or fragmentation of ecosystems to make way for intensive farming. Aquatic environments aren't safe either, with rivers being diverted, coastal habitats subject to development, and the oceans can be affected by the fifth main driver of biodiversity loss. Overfishing can destroy marine ecosystems. Well, it's a similar story on land, with overharvesting of natural resources, such as forest trees for timber. A life on our planet presents a frightening picture, but the documentary is not without hope. It offers viable solutions. Although often these solutions, such as establishing no fishing zones and restoring the rainforest, are actions that only governments and international institutions can undertake. Things on a big scale. This series aims to provide some possible actions that we as individuals can take. So, we've assembled a team of biologists, filmmakers and activists to explore ways an individual can help. 
Each team member will investigate one of the main causes of biodiversity loss and offer some possible actions to help, ranging from easy to hard. We haven't included habitat destruction because we thought it was a generally well-understood topic and wanted to dive into some of the more complicated areas. Finally, an important message. The solutions we're going to offer you aren't going to save the world by themselves. We wish they could, but we have to be honest about that. But that's no reason to get disheartened. By trying those solutions, and by talking about them, you become an ambassador for change. You're raising awareness of the problem and highlighting ways to tackle it. So, let's get into our team's responses.